Hey, welcome back to Hunky Vape. I'm your host, DJ Alex, and today I'm recording a special thank you vlog to celebrate the 350 people who have subscribed to this channel. So first and foremost, I want to say thank you to all of you who inspire me to continue making these videos. You know, as I said in my last thank you vlog, vaping is a journey away from combustible cigarettes. And that journey also includes the crafting aspects of vaping. So that's what's gonna be the focus of today's vlog. First, we're going to review and make more of the Strawberry Crunch Bar e-liquid that I made three months ago. And I have to tell you, it was so good, I vaped it right away. And I didn't even wait for it to reach its full potential. So today, I'm gonna be reviewing what's left of this e-liquid and make another batch of this delicious flavor. You know, once you find the right flavor, vaporized in the right device, it's easy to not smoke ever again. But something that happens all too often, we become creatures of habit, vaping the same thing all the time, using the same device filled with the same liquid. With all the bad news that's going on in the vape industry, you never know when you're not gonna be able to get your favorite e-liquid. So, it's always important for you to consider, what are you gonna do if you can't get your favorite bottle of e-liquid? Do you have another one that's close to it? If not, maybe it's time for you to take a look at finding a solution that you can always turn to just in case. That's why I got into making my own e-liquid. Now I know for certainty that I can always make delicious e-liquid in my vape. And that's why I go and constantly try all of these new things. And it doesn't have to be new as in brand new release out on the market because there's some retro vapes out there that are just as good as your all day vape. So, we're also gonna take a look at some retro vapes today. I ordered a bunch of different stuff. So we've got some vape mail, I've got some retro vapes, we're gonna make some e-liquid, and we're gonna take this hobby and crafting aspect of vaping to a whole new level. I've even picked up and we're gonna do some kind of random recipe review. I've got all the ingredients that I have here for my own mixing, listed at all the flavors. So I'm just going to have it create a list of whatever I can make with it. And we're just gonna pick one random recipe, try it out, mix it up, and I'm gonna let you guys know what I think of it. I've also got my Black Arbiter RTA that I ordered. I got this thing in weeks ago. I wicked it up, loaded it up with my OG Blue, had my wife try it, and that was the last I seen of it. Well, except when she's using it. She growls at me if I even come close to trying to get it. I even told her, I'm like, Is, do you want you need me to re re rework that? Does, does it need rework? Because you've been using it quite a while now. Wrong with the yeah, well, last night she's like, mm, This doesn't have the same flavor I remember. Did you, you sure you mixed it the same? Yeah. My OG blue is my OG blue. Three simple ingredients. It's the same, sorry. So, she finally gave it back to me, and we'll get to dig into it and find out how bad it really is. Or maybe it isn't quite as bad as I would think it would be after vaping the same thing, the same cotton for weeks upon weeks. Well, ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to take a look at this strawberry e-liquid that I mixed up. 
That was March 23rd that I made that batch. And we went camping that weekend. So I mixed the batch up and I put it into a tank and I tried it out and I loved it. Like right off the bat, it was delicious. So I vaped it and I vaped and I vaped it. And I'm like, all right, I think I vaped most of it. I better save some of this to find out what this flavor is really like after it steeps for a while. So that's what we're gonna do first. Let me go get something I can throw this on. It's got a fresh coil and a fresh wick in it. I'll be right back. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're going to be using today. It's the Aspider Odan. I don't know why this thing didn't get more press. I love this tank. I use this tank as my daily grind until I got wrapped up in having to do reviews for all these RBAs. And I, I think RBAs are fantastic. However, it is a beautiful thing to know that you have a stock tank that you can just simply pull the bottom of the tank off. And that's the one thing about this Odin I really love. You can change coils in this and not have to worry about losing any of the fluid, even if you just filled it up, because it's got that sleeve inside of there. Take a brand new coil and just slide it in there. It's a piece of cake. Well, I'm gonna take this strawberry crunch bar, put a couple drops on this coil, and we're gonna prime it up because I know I'm going to continually want to vape this. This e-liquid, it's just that delicious. So, That smells so delicious. But I gotta be patient. Let that coil prime. And as you can tell, it's another day. Yesterday, after I got done recording this introduction, wife brought home lunch. And then I found out a friend of mine passed away. Been battling cancer now for the past year. Just have to wonder what if he would have been able to find out about the benefits of harm reduction? Would he have been able to live longer? We'll never know because he passed away. However, I am gonna march on. Got my coffee out this morning. We have this delicious strawberry crunch bar. Here's what it looks like. If I had to picture it, this is what this recipe looks like. This is what this flavor profile looks like. And I didn't know at the time, but when I first mixed it, I didn't have yellow cake. I had cake batter dip from Flavor West. So this original recipe is using cake batter dip as opposed to yellow cake. Now today, I'm gonna be mixing up the origin, the recipe the way it was meant to be made with yellow cake. Is it gonna be different? Is it gonna be better? Or is it gonna be worse? And I'm gonna sit there and test this and try it out. And then I'm going to leave a little bit of this sitting so that I can reevaluate this in three months and determine which of the two I'm gonna continue making from this point on. That's the advantage of being able to make your own e-liquid. You can customize it. If a certain note in your recipe or in your flavor profile is too strong, well, you can just cut back on that ingredient or that profile that is too strong. Or if something isn't as pronounced as you'd like it to be, like you want more of a graham cracker crust flavor to it, well, then you just up the percentage and try it out. And you can sit there and tune in your recipes 
to make them even better. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. So I think this thing has finally had enough time to soak up that juice. Let's give this thing a try. Oh, wow. Well, I have to say, now that this thing has been steeping for quite some time, the creams and the, the cake component or the crumbly component to that strawberry crunch bar is a lot more pronounced than the strawberry flavor is. The strawberry flavor is taking a back seat now. Whereas when I first mixed it up as a shaken vape, wow, it had the perfect balance of all these flavors. But this one's been sitting around now since March. Still has the smell of it. The aroma is correct. But the flavor profile, the creams and the cake aspect of it, and the crumbliness, the crumbliness is now not, not as pronounced as it was originally. It's kind of muted a little bit. I'm curious to see if I mix this up as a fresh batch today using the original ingredients that are listed. Is that going to change the initial flavor? Is it going to change the flavor down the road after it's been steeping? Well, the only way you can truly find out these things is by doing it yourself. And it's really easy to get started doing this. I mean, you can go take your normal allotted budget that you would spend, and instead of buying, you know, three bottles of juice, just get yourself two bottles of juice and take the cost that you would have spent on that third bottle and go over to some flavors because you can pick up these little things like two three dollars and you know you'd have 10 flavors to start off with and my recommendation is is for you to find a recipe that truly interests you a recipe that's got a five star rating or four and a half star rating because people mix this up and then they review it and that's what we're going to do today wayne was commenting the other day about the one thing that people don't do enough of is mix other people's recipes because there are literally hundreds and hundreds of recipes that are on all the flavors and on the other recipe websites that people mix and then nobody else mixed it. So I'm going to start doing these random recipe reviews where I take these random recipes using the ingredients I already have so it doesn't cost me anything to mix it. I'm going to mix up a little, little batch of it. Speaking of which, the first vape mail today is bottles because that's the one thing that you're going to need to have. You're going to need to have containers to mix it in. Yeah, once you know you got something, you can make them in bigger bottles like this one. I've got a 60 mil bottle. I've got 100 mil bottles. I've got I've got 120 mil bottles. I've been I've been buying this stuff up left and right because every turn of the corner in this industry. There's more regulations, there's more taxations, there's less availability, it's harder to order the stuff, it's harder to get the stuff. So, let's get this package opened up. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, obviously, a lot of this stuff, you're gonna always be able to find. Because like this, this came from Amazon. Because there are so many other people using these bottles for other things. Look at that. Nice 30 mil bottle. And it 
we go back to the old style with the drippers and the droppers. Matter of fact, look at that. Home slice. Mm-hmm. It's like a lemon custard. I might have to give that one a try today, too. All right, all right, all right. Let me throw this stuff together. Mm, that is so delicious. All right, here is the recipe. If any of you are interested in making it, All right, here you go. Here is the recipe for strawberry crunch bar. Now, I'm already going to tell you this because this is something that I should have done a long time ago. I should have done the last time I placed my order from Bull City Flavors. I should have placed an order for some WS23 to give it that cooling effect because you can't have a strawberry crunch bar, a strawberry ice cream crunch bar that doesn't have some kind of a cooling effect. And I'm not looking for like that big menthol-y kind of flavor. I'm looking for just that hint of changing this from being a bunch of flavors to an experience just like biting into a strawberry crunch bar pulled right out of the freezer. So I'm tweaking, I'm modifying this recipe and I'm gonna make it perfect. And once I do, I'll list it publicly so you guys can make it too. However, here's the ingredients that we need to have to be able to make this. Now, if you're not familiar with it, if you've never done any mixing before, on the left-hand side, these three abbreviations, those are for the manufacturers of the flavors. FW is Flavor West. INW stands for Inawera. TPA is the Perfumer's Apprentice or TFA, the Flavor Apprentice. However, depending on what recipe website you use, they're gonna prefer one abbreviation over the other. And it's the same thing, TPA, TFA, same thing, okay? And then obviously you have like Liquid Barn and you have all these other, Mollenberry, and you got, there's a whole bunch of manufacturer flavors out there. It's just fantastic. The opportunities we have be able to make our own e-liquid and it's so affordable once you get just a couple of these and you have the basic things to do it which is vegetable glycerin and propylene glycol yeah it's five bucks for a liter of this stuff it's just fantastic so Let's get started here. And I'm gonna pull out a bottle and get the scale out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to finally get this thing all mixed up. And if you are gonna be doing this, I highly recommend you go out and buy yourself a scale. And it doesn't have to be this particular one. You can get any scale out there. The more accurate it is, the more accurate your recipes are going to be. And this isn't rocket science. If you're off by a tenth of a, a gram, it's not gonna make that much of a difference, okay? So you could use syringes to do your mixing, okay? Like this recipe calls for 7.15 grams of PG or 6.9 milliliters. So you can get yourself a syringe and do your mixing that way, all right? Or, Spend the $10, $15 to get yourself a decent scale. I mean, they have jeweler scales on Amazon as cheap as $10. And they work as good as these ones do. There's better ones out there. You spend a little bit more money, you're going to get a better product. But get yourself a scale. Or if you're just getting started, you can pick up a starter bag of syringes for like 10 bucks. So your initial investment is going to be the same whether you go this route or you go that route. Anyway... Let's get our um, PG added into there. All right, we have our seven grams of PG added. We tear the thing out and let's move on to our first flavoring, which is 
Capella Sugar Cookie. All right, so I have Capella Sugar Cookie. All right here, we're going to take and put in 1.2 grams. So you just simply add the drops until your scale reaches 1.2. And since this isn't rocket science, I'm going to fast forward to adding the rest of the ingredients. Tear it out. Flavor West is coming in at 0 0.9 grams. Tear it out. In a wear of biscuit is 0 0.6 grams. Tear it out. TFA Bavarian Cream is 1.8 grams. Tear it out. Cheesecake Graham Crust. TFA or TPA, take your pick. That is 0 0.9. Tear it out and we go with TFA Strawberry. TFA Strawberry is also 0 0.9. Now we have Strawberry Ripe from TFA and this is 3.6 grams. And lastly, to wrap it up, we add a little bit of vanilla swirl. You know that flavor you get on top of a cupcake from the icing? Yeah. 1.2 grams. Tear it out. All right. That is all the flavoring that we need to add for this lovely, delicious strawberry crunch bar. Move these all out of the way because then the very next thing that we need to do before we add the vegetable glycerin is for us to do our initial swirl mixing. Create a little vortex in the bottom of the... That's mixing all the flavors in the PG together to create a homogenized blend of flavoring. All right, so the last ingredient that we have to add is 52.97 grams of vegetable glycerin. And that ultimately is going to fill up the rest of this bottle. So theoretically, I could just tear this out and I'm going to fill it up to the bottom of this rim and see how we did. Right on the button. All right. So, all we need to do now is we take our topper, put it on here, shut this off. We take our lid, put it on there, and tighten it all the way down. That pushes that inner funnel into the bottle. And as you can see, there is the vegetable glycerin and the flavoring mixed together. Now, all the ingredients that go into this e-liquid are water soluble, but because they do have different viscosity, it does take a little bit of time for all of that to reach equilibrium throughout the entire solution. So we can sit here and shake it or we can whip out a little fancy vortex blender. I probably shouldn't put that on the scale. The vibrations of war be a good thing for it. And all you gotta do for this thing is you just push it down and it will mix the contents of this. If you don't feel like getting a little workout. Or just give it a good shake. All right, 
Once you see it's filled with all these bubbles, you know you've pretty much mixed it to death. So, I'm going to set this aside and we'll give this a chance to finish reaching our equilibrium status or as close to it as we can get it without having to literally wait. And we're going to move on to a random recipe. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this right here is the ingredients that I have added to my flavor stash. Everything has been entered into there and all the different flavorings that I've picked up so far are listed there. Well, one of the cool things about a lot of these recipe websites is if you want to create a recipe, you can browse for the recipes or you can have it give you a list of things. If you see right here on the top where it says recipes, it says, what can I make? So it's going to take a look at everything that you have in your inventory and it's gonna go through all the recipes that are out there and it's gonna determine what you can go and make. Well, my latest order for flavorings were for the exclusive purpose of ordering whatever I needed to mix this apple cinnamon donut. Wayne did a review on it. This was actually put together by a collective in Germany, the DIY e-juice community and they came up with this recipe. So I mixed up a batch and let it sit here for a week and handed it over to the wife. And just like with the black Oxwa Arbiter, well, I hate to tell you, she loves it so much that I'm not gonna be able to have it here. So it's pretty good. When I first put it into our tank and tried it out, I didn't think it had quite enough sweetness. But then again, I'm used to using these high sweetness content juices that we have laying around here. But to each their own. And it's very easy to make an adjustment to that. You can simply add some sweetener to it and get it to your liking. However, she loves it the way it is. Well, let's pick a random recipe review, looking at all the different things that are available what am I going to mix today? What do I feel like trying? Dead Christmas? Hey, it's July. It's time for Christmas in July. What's this dead Christmas? I think that's the one I'm gonna pick. Random recipe review for dead Christmas. And to make dead Christmas, we are going to use our TFA Cheesecake, graham crust, capella, vanilla custard. Did I have that out? And liquid barn white chocolate peppermint. All right, I need to get capella, vanilla custard, and liquid barn white chocolate peppermint. There we go. We have our cheesecake graham crust. We have liquid barns, white chocolate peppermint, and Capella's vanilla custard. Let's mix up a batch of this. And I'm going to use this lovely 30 mil glass bottle to mix up our little batch. Let's switch it over. All right. So we pull the top off of that, turn this on and tear it out. And looking at this, we're going to create a batch. So let's mix. All right. For this batch, we're going to need to put in Cheesecake graham crust, 1.2 grams.
Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Something doesn't quite look right here. Oh, yup, yup. If we take a close look in here, this was set for a 60 mil bottle. So, I need to change this to a 30 mil bottle. All right. That looks more like it. So we're going to need half as much. So what I put in there, I can literally use to make two batches of this. Oh, all right. So I'm going to take and put in to our batch 0 0.6 grams of cheesecake graham crust. it out so we start off with zero okay that is our cheesecake graham crust now we're going to put our vanilla custard in there and that's 0 0.45 grams there we go scale is trying to decide how much it's doing and that's why it matters how accurate your scales are all right last ingredient we have last flavoring ingredient we have 1.8 grams of white chocolate peppermint well that last drop hit the outside of the glass, so I need to put one inside. And that's going to take it just a hair over, but, but man, does that smell like white chocolate peppermint. Oh, these flavorings are delicious. All right, PG. Looks like we need to put in 6.37 grams of PG, and then we'll fill it up with VG. So when you're mixing in small bottles like this, it might be beneficial to have syringes around so you can get a little more precise with it. Because even with these toppers like this, I mean, when I'm making a 100 mil bottle, I'm glad I have big openings like this for the for the PG. But when you're mixing in little tiny 30 mils, sometimes I wonder if you're better off just using a syringe for it, just for the precision aspect of it. All right, the last ingredient we have to put in here is our vegetable glycerin. And that should come out to 26.5 grams. Well, let's fill up the bottle and see how close we are. Well, we're at 26.7, and that isn't quite to the top of the ring, but that is what a full bottle should be, I suppose, if you were selling it to a customer. So, let's take this. Clean up our little mess because I did have some of the PG dripping down the edge of this glass. There we go. Got this thing all mixed up. And to keep it from getting mixed up, as in, what kind of flavors in here? Well, there's something else you might want to pick up if you're going to be doing any kind of mixing. That other thing that you're going to need to pick up is a label maker. Now, this particular label maker came with a roll of this nice, wide, fat tape. And that's been great when I go to make a big, huge bottle like this. But I'm not sure if I really want to use a big, huge label on a little tiny glass bottle. So, I ordered some extra. So, we're going to create a little label for this thing. There's our label. Dead Christmas, and then today's date. So, we just peel this off.
and we apply it to the bottle. There we go. Perfectly marked. Now, give us one last shake, set it off to the side, and it's time for us to try our first batch, our first recipe that we made. All right, a little fast forward in time, ladies and gentlemen. I got the labels taken care of. I have Dead Christmas and the production date for our e-liquid. I made another bottle of it since I started off using twice the flavoring because I originally had the recipe set up for a 60 ml bottle, which is what our strawberry crunch bar is. So I got a label on that one as well. And if you take a look at the color difference between the original freshly mixed batch and the batch that has been sitting around for three months now, you can tell there is a color change and it will get darker as time goes on. Oxidation of the materials inside here causes that color change. Now to make the competition fair because our first one that we have we took and put into an Aspire Odin with a new coil. Well, I'm going to open up a brand new package because I have a couple of these. Since this was my favorite banger, we're going to open up another one. And we're going to take this and I'm going to come look at that. That is like jewelry. I have never seen anybody else do a texturized glass like this. That is just gorgeous. All right. I am going to convert this one over and put the bubble glass on. And this is a unique feature of this particular setup is that the bubble glass on this one is actually straight sided. As you can see here, that is the bubble glass because it sits in here and the sides are perfectly straight. And the straight glass straight on the inside is actually like a bubble glass because of the facet. Fascinating. All right. Make sure I use the same coil. I have a 0.2 ohm coil in the other one. And this one is 0.2 ohms. And I have that other one running at 55 watts right in the middle of that. So I'm going to put the top cap back on this one. Gonna take off the bottom, pull out this coil that comes with it. This one is 0 0.3 ohms and it runs between 35 and 45 watts. So if you like a cooler vape, man, this would be the perfect setup for you. All right, enough jibber jabbering. It's time, put this away. Juice this coil up and try out our fresh batch of Strawberry Crunch Bar. Lose that. Put a couple drops in the top of this coil. So you want to make sure that the cotton on the very top of this is saturated. If you don't, I've had this happen before where I forgot on this particular coil, you definitely need to put in generous coating on there. Let that soak into the coil because what will happen is the mesh in the cotton at the very top of this will start to go bad as soon as you fire it up. All right, I'm gonna clean up my mess, fill up the tank and see how this thing tastes. Awesome. Got that sitting on the Ultroner Gia Stabilized Wood Mod. Have to give that a little bit of time for it to soak in. So how about we go to opening up some vape mail? I have a package here. I ordered this from Gas City Vapes in Canada. This was because I wanted to get the 
the TFV-18 RBA for the TFV-18 tank for my Arc Fox. And I'm in the process of doing the review on it. And my initial impression was, wow, that's really good. But I'll save the rest of the stuff for the actual video. It'll be coming out very soon. I just want to make sure that I provide accurate information to you guys, okay? Because your initial impression of something and your impression after you've used it for a while are totally different. Very rarely is the impression that you initially get from a product the exact same a week later. I don't care how much you love it after the glamour of it being a brand new product wears off, well then guess what? Your impression is different. It might actually get better. It all depends on the product. So what did I pick up from my order? Well, I picked up a TFV-18. Actually, I picked up two of them and I already have another one here. So, this is something that I'm going to be giving away. Now, I haven't figured out the details on how I'm gonna go and do that because YouTube doesn't allow it to be conducted on the platform, but stay tuned and somebody is going to get to try out the TFV-18 and I wanna know what they think of it because I'm just one person. My impression might be different than yours. And depending on how you build these coils and how you put it in here, you might have a different experience than I do. However, the ability to take a stock tank and convert it over into a rebuildable, especially when these coils on this thing are massive, it's fantastic. So, what else did I order? I have some wire. I also got coils for the Guru tank. Which is laying underneath a pile of stuff over here. Now, this has been my chief complaint with a lot of these manufacturers, okay? When you go and you put together a kit, why is it that they only include one coil for you to try it out? What happens if you're the unlucky bastard who happens to get a bad coil? Or, in my situation, both of the coils work great, but they didn't last as long as the Odin coils. So, I decided to order some coils. I've got one of each one. So I'm gonna try these things out and see to determine do these coils last shorter time than the Odin coils? Or did I just happen to get a batch that wasn't quite put together 100% correctly to the original specifications? So I ordered coils for that. We're gonna check that out. And I needed to order a new build mat because this one here has been with me since the very beginning and it served me well but it would be nice every once in a while to take this clean it off and use a different build mat so that's what i did and look at that beautiful build mat it's not quite as big as the one i have here but i decided i'm going to use this one And last but not least, because in Canada, the child resistant compliant certification is literally decimated the rebuildable tanks, all this stuff they have on clearance sale right now. And it's not just Gassity Vapes that is putting it on clearance. Dash Vapes has a bunch of stuff on clearance too, $5 a piece, because they need to get rid of it before the deadline for when all the tanks that they have for sale meet child resistant compliant certification. And I'm wondering what it's gonna be like here in September 
when the PMTA deadline reaches its one year anniversary from when everybody had to submit everything. The FDA is supposed to put out a list. I actually got in contact with them and sent them an email and asked them, what's going on with this? Do you have any new information? How far along out of the 6 million products have you gotten through? And what's gonna happen? Are they gonna go to the judge and get an extension? Because there's a judge order that requires them to be done in 12 months. Well, if I hear anything, I'll let you know. However, I couldn't pass up the deal that they had on these RDAs. So, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna open one of these up, throw a set of coils in there, and find out how good it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do have this package finally opened up. And we're gonna get this built, but in order for this to work, I'm gonna have to put it on a mod. I've got a bunch of different ones to choose from, but there's one that I've been dying to open up for quite some time now. So how about we open up the Odin 200 and pair up this Dovepo variant to find out how good they perform. All right, set that aside, pull this out of the package and see what kind of a dripper we have before us today. Pretty cool. Let me grab a build stand out of the drawer. You can pick these things up on Amazon. And your local vape shop probably has some too. Look at that deck. Mm-hmm. That ought to be pretty easy to build on. Do they give you coils? A TVC creation. Dovepo variant. All right, inside the package, we have extra grub screws, a tri-tool, and some O-rings but they do not include coils. So, I'm gonna have to go and get some coils to throw in this thing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm finally back. Got all the tools that we need to get this tank all set up properly. I pulled out a Med USA coil set, parallel tank track, 0 0.2 ohms. It's supposed to be 24 gauge and a ribbon with 32 gauge. Pretty fancy coil. Looks like we're gonna be throwing a lot of mass in there, but we're gonna be running that with the Odin 200 so we can throw as much heat and energy into those coils as we need to. And I'm curious to find out what our e-liquid tastes like. Yeah, might as well pull out a dripper if we're going to be using an e-liquid that was designed for dripping on the coils. And this comes with a nice sheet of Muji cotton, organic cotton from the looks of it. What did this coil take? What's that coil look like? Pretty nice. Yeah. All right. Well, let's prep this. Slide the coils down in there and see if we need to trim the leads before or after. Oh, we're definitely going to need to pre-trim these leads. Oh, yeah. Looking at the way that that sits, need to get rid of about half of that. And to make things a little easier, I'm going to use my little trick. Let's figure out, is this a three millimeter wrap? Sure is. You know, if you don't have one of these coiling tools, they're only 15 bucks. Well worth the investment. 
So let's continue that wrap around. Let me grab my non-mooring pliers. You know, since I moved everything over to the new studio, this has been a challenge because I'm a creature of habit and I like things being in a consistent place. And sometimes it's very difficult to find stuff. Somebody left me a comment asking if the parts between the Zeus X real and the Zeus X fake are interchangeable. And I will give you an answer to it as soon as I find the fake one. I don't know what I did with that thing after I got done doing that video. I never ended up setting it up or to be used. So where it got to, I don't know. But I haven't given up looking for it. And if I need to pull everything off of the shelves to find it, well, by golly, then that's what I'm gonna end up doing. All right, I'm gonna take this and cut this down to six millimeters. After fiddle farting with the thing for a good couple minutes here. Trim these leads. There we go. Got them in there. Let's get our cotton prepped and wicked. Taste this lovely. Philip Brooke. Home slice. Nice. There we go, we have it all coiled up, wicked up. Now, before we juice it up, how about let's get this Odin 200 opened up. I ordered it in the silver because it looks just like a Cylon. You know, if you're my age, you got to watch the original Battlestar Galactica. And the Cylon were shiny. And this, Look, yeah, that's going to be the nickname for this mod. It's going to be the Cylon mod. Awesome. Throw a set of batteries in here. All right, bad news is I couldn't put the 21700s in there. I got a brand new set that needed a charge. And since I'm using the Aegeus Max 4-hour lovely strawberry crunch bar well my other one is not a match set so i decided to have a toke on this wonderful flavored e-liquid i threw some 30 cues in there for now and let that new set charge but that is gorgeous look at that i know it's probably gonna be a fingerprint magnet but frankly i'm not worried about it so let's throw this beautiful build on here What's she omen out at? 0.19. Yeah. Open up our lovely Philip Roquet home slice. Mm. Smells delicious. Not 
chemical test. Mmm, that lemon really pops. I've had some lemon ones out there and it's just like, my vaping pledge? Not this one. Awesome. And, put a little juice on the inside of this. And on these O-rings, you get this to slide down. Now, what's this gonna be like? Hmm, very interesting. Well, I don't like this e-liquid. It's got a lemony flavor to it, but it's... I don't know how to describe it. It's like... It's got a funky aftertaste. I can kind of get like that marshmallowy top you get on a lemon pie, a lemon meringue pie. Hmm. I don't really like this juice. No, yuck. Philip Roquet, I don't like your home slice. Tastes like, tastes like carpet with some pledge on it. Ah. Yuck. Uh-uh. Ugh. I need to go get a coffee. Clear my palate of this. Ugh. This one? Sorry. It's going in the bin. Never thought I'd see the day when I would throw it in the bin. I don't even want anybody else to try it. I don't like it. Yuck. Nutty as a fruitcake. No way. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Got some coffee to clear my palate. I'm gonna try some of this strawberry crunch bar from the original recipe. Now that's a delicious e-liquid. Oh yeah, pairs with the coffee like nothing else. All right, now I have the Spire Odin on this nice stab wood mod. And this is exactly what we just got done mixing. What's it gonna taste like? Oh yeah, that strawberry is really coming through on this one. Get a little bit of that creaminess. Mm. 
That strawberry fragrance is delicious. The only thing that's really missing on a shaken vape of this, I would say, is that anywhere a biscuit. I don't get any of the biscuit flavor from this. We have the one that's been steeping since March 23rd. Much more creaminess to this flavor. And you do get a little bit of that biscuit. Just subtle, it's not very pronounced. But then again, on a strawberry crunch bar, you're mainly getting that strawberry and vanilla ice cream flavor. And then the crunch and the biscuit is just kind of like a additional side note. Now my real question is, what is this newer batch of Strawberry Crunch Bar going to taste like after it steeps for a while? Because if you remember, the Flavor West that I used originally was cake batter, not yellow cake. Well, I'm definitely going to be enjoying this and I'm definitely going to hold off finishing off that bottle. I'm gonna stop when I get down to about the same amount that I had left. And I'm gonna leave that steep and you're gonna to have to come back if you really wanna know the difference between those two in a couple months. It'll be another vlog. I'll follow up on that. But this is delicious. Mmm, fantastic. All right, all right, all right. Wow. Time to move on to some retro vape and vape mail. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Our next vape mail comes from e -Sig Mafia. And let me tell you, I picked up a bunch of their stuff that they have on clearance. And I've ordered from them in the past before. They have some amazing prices and the selection that they have is different than a lot of other places. I don't know if they're a clearinghouse for older stuff or whatnot, but I'm telling you, the things that you can pick up from them are fantastic. So let's start unpacking this box and I'll show you all the different things that I got. Here we have the Morden. Look at that. Yeah. All right, got some coils here. Now we have the Armor Mega. I also have Cloud 571 RDA. A lot of these older tanks are a lot smaller and therefore are prone to having a problem with heat. They don't dissipate the heat as much. However, if you know what you got and it's just another tank laying around that you pick up once in a while, just to have a different juice in it. I mean, when you pick one of these things up for four or five bucks, even $10, it's a great deal. And it gets you to experiment a little bit with all the different options that are out there. So here we go. Here's the Theorem Atomizer and they were using round wire back in the day. And here we have a coil ready to go, already wicked up. So if you're hesitant about getting into doing RDAs and whatnot, take a look at the Theorem Atomizer. I'll open this up here in a minute and get you to see what it's really like. All right, moving on, because I ordered a bunch of different things. Got some spare glass for some other ones. I've got some spare coils for this theorem. And that was done by Wismec. Now, I have an Inikin Proton. Look at that. Yeah. I'm gonna give that a try and see what she's like. 
see how good it is. And then I have an armor kit. Comes with the mod and the tank. Couldn't pass that up. I think that was like 15 or 20 bucks or something. I've got a backpack from Joytech. This one actually operates on AA batteries. What a concept. Not sure how they're getting AA batteries to produce enough energy. Maybe they just have a big capacitor in there that stores the energy. Interesting conversion. So next up on the list, we have a Wismec Casino. Yeah. And a slipstream. Look at that. All kinds of retro devices here. And then the last one that we have is Movkin. I've never heard of this. This is the Disguiser 150. It's time to change now. All right. I'm going to switch cameras, let you get a closer view of what's going on. I got this stuff in back when you could still get everything through the post office, adult signature required. But let's flip it over and do some retro vaping. Here we go, big pile of stuff. Not too shabby. Little exploration. Got some retro music on. Take us back to the 80s. Back when we were learning how to cope with life. Back when you had big hair bands. All kinds of fun stuff. Put that off to the side. We'll put that off to the side. Let's narrow this down because I don't want this to be a three hour long vlog. Mm, we'll take the fishbone and put that off to the side. Take the mord and put it off to the side. What are we left with here? Got another RDA. Got the slipstream. I got the armor kit. The Wismec Vincino. And our Inakin Proton. Well, I think I'm going to give the Proton a try. We'll put this other stuff to the side. We'll do a retro vape on the next vlog. Pull one of these things out and give it a shot. But today, well, yeah, we're gonna stick with the Inakin today. We're gonna look at the Inakin Proton. Oh, I'm gonna have to check this out. Inakin Proton. How long ago did this thing even come out? Hmm. Inakin Proton. Inakin Proton is still for sale at Element Vape in the Scion 2 starter kit. $62. All right, let's look this thing up here. Inakin Proton. Enhanced vapor production, 1.45 inch color screen display, six different color options for your screen. Nice. Change begins from within. 235 watt chipset. Sought after kit. We got three color options available. Looks like we've got a gunmetal with blue trim and a bluish tank. We got a white one with rainbow trim. And we got a red one with gunmetal trim. Man, I like those color options. That's pretty slick. Innovation matters, easy top fill. Specifications for the Proton Plex set. Six watts to 235 watts. There's temperature control, TCR, bypass, and curves. Zero to nine volts, 300 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit temperature control, two amp charge capacity, and 40 amp maximum output. Atomizer resistance range is 0 0.05 ohms to 3.5 ohms. Yeah. All right. Let's get this thing unboxed and have ourselves a little retro vape. 
All right. Let me get this. Awesome. Pull that out. Look at that packaging. You know, details matter. When you have a company that puts this much time and energy into even the packaging and gives you a little pull tab to help you remove it from the sleeve, that's an extra step that I think deserves to be rewarded. Innovation inside, we have an accessory box. And here's the proton. Inside the accessory box will probably be the usual peripherals. We have ourselves a nice charging cable. And that one actually looks like it's got some decent length to it. It's not this ridiculous three inch long cable you're supposed to use to charge your device, which I don't recommend people do anyway. If you can charge it in an external battery charger, then oh, look at that. They even give you a little ring to throw on your tank to help protect it from getting broken if it falls over. Nice. Very nice. What else is in here? Another baggie with spare O-rings. Awesome. Take a closer look at that later. Let's pull out this mod. Side fire. Insert two 18650 batteries. Power on, three clicks. Three clicks in the menu. Wow, they did an awesome job labeling that. Cool. Throw two batteries in here. The top of its mark, positive, negative, A and B. They should have done a little better job as far as color coding it. But so far, that's about the only ding I can get them for at this point. Three clicks of the fire button turned it on. Peel this off. And let's reveal that lovely screen. Check atomizer. Man. Man, that's awesome. How about our tank here? What do we got? Look at that coil. Damn. Look at the mesh inside there. Let me compare that. There we go. Here's the TFV-18 coil. And here is the proton coil. I thought this one was massive. But the diameter of this one is just as big, if not actually bigger on the inside. And that mesh that they have? Man, I'm excited to try this thing out. Quad core foil. Look at that. I like airflow. I'm putting this single mesh coil in here. It is 0 0.15 ohms, canthal. Recommended 60 to 110 watts. Well, my only concern is Look at the very top of that coil. The mesh comes all the way up to the very, very tip of the cotton there. I feel like that mesh should be a little bit lower inside of that wicking material. Well, only one way to find out is to give this thing a try. So what do we have? We have the straight glass, we have a bubble glass, and we have a different drip tip. So if you don't like that drip tip, we'll put a different one. Man, everything's individually wrapped. That's some quality there. 
All right, I've been playing with this for a while now. Trying to switch out the glass, make sure we got a tight fit on here. And this is pretty loose on the very top of it. Now, granted, if this is an, sitting upright, it shouldn't be an issue. And there isn't any movement in it, but it just feels really loose. It's on them and off. So I swapped the O-rings out on them. Let's take and put some of my OG blue that I have on this coil. Get this thing wicked up and try out the Scion tank on the Proton. There's a nice ratchety feel to the airway on the bottom. The 510 pin doesn't stick out very far on the bottom. So this is definitely not something you can put on a hybrid device. Threads are very smooth. And there's a label here etched in there. I don't know if you can read that. Push to fill. Here we go, trying to fill it with a 120 mil bottle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, finally time for us to give the Inican Proton with the Scion 2 tank a try. You know, in this last little break, I had to go pick up my daughter and uh, I'll tell you what, I had a chance to finally look up the information on this thing. This thing was released back in 2018. And you can still get coils for it. You can still buy this kit. I was looking at a bunch of different places. Element has it for like $60, $61. A couple other places had it for like $65 for the kit. You can pick up coils for this thing for like 12 bucks for a three pack. And the other thing I looked up, what was so special about this device? Back in the day, well, exactly like I pointed out and I caught right off the bat. The coil that's in this, because that mesh and that cotton is so big, these coils last way more than a week, more than two weeks, more than three weeks. And according to Rip Trippers, he got a whole month out of that coil before he had to replace it. That is innovation. The coils you get on your standard stock tanks nowadays, you're lucky to get 10, 14 days out of them. For this coil to be able to last 30 days is amazing. And I'm gonna put that to the test because I have a hard time believing you can get a set of coils that'll last you a whole month. And we're gonna take a look at my wife's arbiter here in a minute after we try this to see what it looks like after vaping the same coils and same cotton for three weeks. Is it possible for this thing to really last you a month? I'm gonna find out. Anyway, without further ado, first toke. Set this thing up at 60 watts, right at the beginning of the coils range. What's it like? Holy airflow, and it's quiet. I'm not sure about that flavor though. Now I know that this coil has been sitting inside that box for a long time. Flavor's decent, but it's not quite a hundred percent what I expect it to taste like. I've been vaping this OG blue in all different kinds of setups and tanks and mods. This one, right off the bat, it's got that off note. And it's not the same off note I've had in other tanks before. They usually take a couple days to break in before you get the full flavor out of it. But I love the mod. I love the setup. And if this thing can truly last a month, it would be worth a tank full of juice before you get full flavor out of it. This is definitely gonna require some further investigation.
I remember when I did the review on the Arc Fox, and I remember that this thing had a little bit of a off note when you first took your first toke on it. And after a couple days, that goes away and you get the real potential flavor out of that setup. If they were able to accomplish the same thing, but get you a full month on a coil, now that's something to write home about. So, I think it's time we set this aside and focus on the Oxfa Arbiter RTA. I got this thing. I got this thing a month ago. Coiled it, wicked it, threw my favorite juice in there. And my wife has had it ever since. She refused to let it go because she kept telling me this thing is working perfect. Don't worry about changing the coils. I don't need to change the cotton yet. You don't have to worry about it. It's still working perfect. Three and a half weeks. I just checked. Three and a half weeks she's been vaping on this thing. Is this going to be disgusting when we open it up? Well, let me flip it. We'll take a look, open it, and see... What do these coils look like? All right. Let me zoom in. What are these coils going to look like? Ew. That is disgusting. And she just now realized that it doesn't produce a whole lot of flavor like it used to. And I had to turn the wattage up a little bit to get it to produce like it used to. Well, it's time for us to clean this thing off. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take it in the bathroom, pull the cotton out of it, dry fire it, brush off all this crud that's on here, and I'll be right back. There we go. We've got it all cleaned off. And I do have, as you can tell, just a little bit of space on the end of that coil there. However, if you go and fire the thing, it seems to heat up pretty evenly. So I'm gonna take my tweezers, just adjust that very last part of the coil bend that in just a hair more. I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but I think it's going to perform pretty good. As long as the coils heat up evenly. Get some nice wick in there. I think that's going to work wonderfully. All right, so all I had to do, take this into the bathroom, Pull out the old cotton, brush it off a little bit, have a nice dedicated toothbrush using it exclusively for this purpose. It's kept nice and clean. Then you just fire the coil to burn off any of the excess there. If you have an exhaust fan in the bathroom, I suggest that you hold it up near it so that it exhausts all that combustion that would take place here. Because literally, essentially, that's what you're doing is you're burning off whatever residual buildup is on this. And then, once this cools off, put it under water, give it a nice brushing to keep it clean, and you can reuse your coils. Now, as you can tell on here, the coils that I have are nice and clean. There's not, no buildup on there. So we're going to give this thing a fresh set of cotton and we'll go and taste it and find out how good it is. Worst case scenario, if it doesn't work, we'll pull it out, put some fresh coils in it and use it that way. But I've got coils that I've been using for months now. I've cleaned them half a dozen times and they still produce good flavor right off the bat as soon as they're re-wicked and they last a good couple weeks. 
before needing to be redone. Obviously, if you want optimal flavor, new will get you that perfect flavor every time. But realistically, this has worked for her for a lot longer than I thought it was going to. And honestly, I've seen some buildup before and the buildup that was on this wasn't as bad as some of the other ones I've seen. You'll know by the taste and the flavor of your juice if it needs to be done. I try to do mine that I use on a regular basis once a week. I dedicate my Saturdays to rewicking my RTAs and making my bottle of juice for the week. All right, we have that pulled through. Just make sure that there's no solid tough ends where it's compressed. Check that on both sides. As you can see, when this one was cut, it matted all this cotton down. So you want to just break the ends open. And if this one doesn't do it, then we'll pull out the other tweezers that have a nice pointy end on it. And it can literally get in there to break up any matting. I'm not trying to thin it. I'm just trying to make sure that there's no matted clump together sections of this. And you want to make sure that you do have some space for this cotton to expand. And that's another conversation that I'm going to be bringing to our next vlog is different types of wicking material. Organic cotton, cotton balls from your drugstore, those are the most common ones that people use. And cotton being in an organic, natural state will expand as you get it wet. And there's enough room for the tweezers to slip down in there. There's no resistance to it. So that's going to wick wonderfully for us. But there are other wicking materials out there. And somebody posted a comment on one of my videos saying that they use a rayon wick for their, for their setups. So I ordered some. So you caught it was used in World War I as bandage, bandaging for the injured soldier. And there's been a lot of debate over the years about different wicking materials and whether, you know, you should be using organic cotton or whether you should be using unbleached natural cotton or you have Japanese cotton. There's all different kinds of wicking materials. Is there really a difference? Well, there's been a lot of people that have done reviews and stuff on it, but I want to find out for myself and for you guys if that still holds true. Is natural cotton like this the best choice? I mean, we have cotton bacon. We have everybody makes their own brand of it. How much of it is legitimate? Something that is written on the package. Is it legitimate just cotton or is it a blend of cotton and rayon? All rayon is, is cotton fibers broken down and it's the cellulose for that cotton that is created into what you pull out of that box. So something else I happened to notice when I was cleaning this up is we're missing an O-ring on the end of this. So I went into the box, grabbed a new one. We're going to get that put on there. And now, when this slides in there, it'll seal the top of that to make sure that it doesn't leak. All right. I think I'm going to just stick with the OG blue that I have here. I try and click the button for the guys that are new. I try and click the button just a little bit because when the liquid is heated up, becomes much thinner and it's a lot easier to saturate your coils fully 
There we go. Now, using a little trick I picked up from Bruce at BP Mods in his video, I'm painting my wicks after they've been saturated to ensure there are no places where it has to go up and then come back down. So there we have, our wicks are nicely saturated. They're full all the way up to the top. We slide on our cap and then assemble the tank. Throw some juice in here. And the competition begins. Which coil is going to need re-wicked first? Is it going to be my wife's Oxva Arbiter? Or is this Scion tank in this new mesh coil design that they have in there, is that going to outlast the Arbiter? Only one way to find out is to actually try it for a month and see which one gives out first. They're both going to be filled with the same juice. All right. Give this thing a toke and see how she tastes. There ain't nothing wrong with that. That is beautiful. I love the flavor potential you get on a brand newly wicked coil. Oh, fantastic. Delicious. Well, almost done. Wrapping it up for today, I'm going to try out my dead Christmas. I need to throw that into something. So how about I open up this box of Guru coils? And that is one of the nice features. If you haven't seen my video review on the Aspire V-Rod, check it out. Because I love the fact this has a pop-up coil changing system. So I'm gonna grab uh, the coil here. We're gonna use the 0.15 ohm coil, rated 60 to 70 watts. So there we have it. I did find it on the package. The distributor put it on there. So I'm going to take a drop of this lovely dead Christmas. Put it on the coil. And we pop down the coil, take our liquid and fill up the tank. Old school. Very nice. Well, how's this gonna taste? Is it gonna taste like dead Christmas? Or is it gonna taste like a lovely Christmas? Mmm, it smells wonderful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I would love to be able to just start toking on this thing and find out how good that Christmas is, but I gotta give this coil a couple minutes at least to saturate up that wonderful e-liquid. So while that's soaking up, let me tell you about a little trip I took. Now I've visited this vape shop, this Smoke for Less tobacco and vape shop, and it's located in Clarion County, Pennsylvania. This is halfway between Erie and Pittsburgh, and it is just outside the Allegheny National Forest. Let me show you what I mean. Here we go. As you can see, we have Detroit, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and the Allegheny National Forest is right here, and Clarion is located just outside the Allegheny National Forest. Now, we visited previously Schick's Gifts and Tobacco Shop 
And right across the street from there is a gas station that labels themselves as a vape shop. But that vape shop doesn't really have any kind of real vape stuff except for disposable things. But they have plenty of tobacco products and they have plenty of bongs and all kinds of other things. But when it comes to an actual mod and tank, you are not going to find it there. If you go to Schick's Gifts and Tobacco Shop across the street, it's an old style vape lounge. And if you go inside there, lovely lady, I've talked about her before. She got started the way all these mom and pop vape shops got started. Picked this up and realized, oh man, that was so easy to quit smoking. I need to be able to open up a shop and let other people have that same opportunity that I did. So that's what she did. She opened up a vape shop. She has all different kinds of juice there. She has all different kinds of tanks there and setups, starter kits. But she's been doing this for a while and COVID has taken a dramatic effect on vape shops all across the country. Somebody left a comment for me not too long ago stating that um, in the town where they live, their friend had a vape shop and expanded to have multiple vape shops. And now because of COVID, they're down to one vape shop. And because of the vape mail ban, they're having trouble getting inventory into there and they may be closing up their shop. Well, Schick's Gifts and Tobacco Shop is in the same situation. Because of COVID lockdowns and the school being closed down because of COVID and everybody working from home and learning from home, their customer base has been decimated. Well, if you take a look at their shelves and their inventory, they're slowly being whittled down to nothing. And now it's like, well, what are they going to do when this vape mail ban gets fully implemented? They're in the middle of nowhere. What courier service is going to be delivering to them? So what ends up happening is like at Smoke for Less Tobacco and Vape Shop, they are a partner of Kingdom Vapor Wholesale. And Kingdom Vapor Wholesale is actually based out of Butler, Pennsylvania. But this is one of their distribution centers. They have a nice vape shop. Here's what the front of their store looks like. Nice, big building, parking all the way around. And when we visited there, walked in, got to meet the people that are working there. And their combination, vape shop and a tobacco shop. I mean, common sense nowadays, everybody that runs a vape shop is going to be forced with the situation. Do you want to sell cigarettes and tobacco? You have to have a tobacco license to sell vapes. So you're kind of forced into the situation of selling your arch nemesis product. Well, that's neither here nor there. They do, however, have a full selection of any kind of tobacco products that you would be interested in getting. And let's take a look at their shelves here. If you walk around on the right hand side, when you walk in, you've got the counter and behind the counter, you've got a selection of items and you walk further down and the walls full of all different kinds of vape juices that you can pick from. They have drawers full of different coils that you can have for your tank. They've got spare parts there, glass, O-rings and whatnot. The one thing that they didn't have, and I didn't find this out until my second trip there, was the silicone protector rings for the tanks. They don't carry them. Nobody else has asked for them, so I understand why they don't have them. I ended up ordering them off of Amazon. <clears throat> but that was about the only thing that they didn't have. And if you walk around, look at these other cases that they have all their products in. And the wall behind it is nothing but a huge selection of different juices from different companies, different brands, different flavors, all available for any of their customers. They also have a full selection of jewel products and disposable devices. So it's literally a one-stop shop in Clarion 
for anybody that is a vapor. Or if you happen to be in the area, you're out camping in Allegheny National Forest and you need supplies for your vape, this is the place to go because they'll have what you need. Now, if you walk further around the building, you'll take a look that they actually have a full line of tobacco products. They have all different kinds of cartons. They've got roll your own stuff. They've got bag tobacco. They have a cigar humidor case. And you literally can get anything you need as far as tobacco products go. And even grab yourself a drink while you're there. Good selection of products. They didn't have the Arc Fox, so some of the latest, greatest, newest things they don't have. But they do have a, a wide variety of different products available that they've picked up and have not sold or they picked up in a wholesale purchase and are still working their way through. So if you're looking for something in the area, you happen to be in the area, stop by and pay them a visit. Staff is very friendly and they'll be able to answer your questions and get you what you need to get you up and running and out the door. Definitely a place that I'm going to be visiting again. We've got a camp up that way. A couple weeks ago, I DJ'd a gig up there at a different camp and we stopped in on my way to this gig and that's when I purchased my Tia V18 coils and that bottle of juice. However, don't be surprised if their prices are way more than what you're used to paying if you're only buying your stuff online. But that's because Pennsylvania has a 40% wholesale price tax on all vaping products. It's horrible, but that's, a, that's the situation we live in. We don't have a choice. You got to pay it if you want to be able to continue vaping. So anyway... I want to thank the guys there, especially the one guy there that manages their website for their wholesale business, because I mean, he's knowledgeable. He was right on top of everything as far as, you know, what the impact is for the PMTAs for him, you know, for the companies that, you know, supply him with inventory and for the supply of the wholesaler with stuff for distribution. And he's on top of it and knows what's going on. And thank you. I appreciate your kindness while I was there. All right, last thing for today, I'm going to try Dead Christmas and see how she tastes. Now this, according to the recipe, you're supposed to have a three-day steep on it, just like you do with the OG Blue. But I'm gonna try it because I can't wait three days to try this thing up. Oh yeah. That is so flavorful and reminds me very much so of my awesome town candy cane e-liquid that I first used to quit smoking. Mm hmm. I love how they put that warning label on there. Warning this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Except when you roll around, you just realize it's zero milligram. There is no nicotine in it, but they still have to put these ridiculous labels on it. So, I can't possibly make a video without telling you become an advocate and stand up and fight for your right before it's gone. We have the greatest miracle for smoking cessation, what we use to quit smoking. And people are trying to take away our right to safer harm reduction products. So that's my bit. Take a couple minutes out of your day, go become an advocate. Get on any social media platform that you choose and let people know how this saved your life, how this helped you quit smoking. So that wraps it up for this vlog today. 
I want to thank all 350 of you who have signed up and subscribed to this channel. I can't believe it. I've come such a long way and it hasn't even been a full year yet. And I'm going to keep bringing you the news, the science, the advocacy, and these vlogs so that we can enjoy the crafting aspect of vaping. And it'll save you some money if you get into the crafting aspect of vaping. I appreciate all you guys watching. I appreciate you guys, all, all of you sticking around to the very end. And my message is always, all you need to stay away from deadly combustible cigarettes is peace, love, and a hunky vape. Have a great day.